A hard point is a location on an airframe designed to carry an external or internal load. This includes a station on the wing or fuselage of a civilian aircraft or military aircraft where external jet engine, ordnance, countermeasures, gun pods, targeting pods or drop tanks can be mounted. Aircraft, in aeronautics, the term station is used to refer to a point of carriage on the frame of an aircraft. A station is usually rated to carry a certain amount of payload. It is a design number which already has taken the rated G-forces of the frame into account. Therefore, point loads on the structure from externally or internally mounted stores, engines, equipment, passengers, and payload are simply the weight of the item and any pylons, seats, mounting brackets, etc. multiplied by the maximum load factor which the aircraft will sustain when these items are carried. In civilian aviation a station is usually used to carry an external engine or a fuel tank. As engines are usually a fixed installation operators usually refer to them with the designation of the engine. Therefore, the term is mostly being used for load points meant for non-fixed installation. In the military, a station can also be called weapon station. Unlike civilian aircraft NATO aircraft frame strength is required to remain without detrimental deformations at 115% of the limit or specified loads, and without structural failure at ultimate loads. Most stations of honor military aircraft serve to carry pods or weapons. A minor number of stations can also serve to carry external fuel tanks. These stations are called wet, a general aeronautic term referring to usage of fuel like wet thrust. The term wet is also carried over to the adapters, such as a pylon. Wing stations require pylons to carry objects. Stations on the fuselage may not necessarily require a pylon such as the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle while others closer to the wing do like the F-14 Tomcat or needing item space like the Miquan MiG-27. An aircraft with swing wings must swivel the pylon to minimize drag, such as on the General Dynamics F-111 and the Panavia Tornado. On the F-111 not all hardpoints can be used if the plane is to operate with fully swept wings because of the narrowed spacing between pylons. Stations may be numbered for reference or not at all. The numbering is not necessarily consistent and may originate from elsewhere like Station 559 on the B-52. There is not necessarily an order in which numbers are assigned. The order can be for example from left to right or vice versa, or mirrored from outboard to inboard. The often unique centerline station is no exception. Pylon, a pylon serves to connect the frame of an aircraft to an item or object that is being carried, hence, it is an adapter. The use of a pylon is necessary to clear the carriage item of control surfaces as well as prevent undesired disturbance of the flow of air toward the wing. Pylons are usually designed to be aerodynamic to reduce air resistance. There are many different forms. Sizes and designs of pylons distinctly turned accordingly like a wedge adapter or stub wing pylon. Stealth aircraft like the F-22 or F-35 can have ejectable pylons to retain stealth and reduce drag. Military, NATO suspension equipment and stores are standardized in MILS TD-8591. A military pylon provides carriage, deployment, and the ability to jettison external stores or Euro weapons, pods, fuel tanks or other ordnances. Pylons have a modular bay to mount other adapters and carry a wider variety of stores. These adapters can be bomb racks, launches or other types of support structures each with their own provisions for mounting all other assemblies. Racks. Racks carry, arm, and release stores. Racks are either part or can be inserted into the modular bay of a support structure like a pylon. A rack requires for example an Aero 1A adapter assembly to attach to the aircraft pylon assembly. A rack can mount a store or another suspension equipment. The store is mounted by locking the store's lugs with L-shaped suspension hooks in the rack. Depending on the mass of the store there can be a single lug or a number of lugs on the store separated by a certain distance. The distances are standardized. For NATO there is the 14-inch suspension for a lighter or 30-inch suspension for heavier stores. Depending on specific stores from 1000 LB upward three or four lugs can be used within the defined suspension range. 
For Russian stores there is the standard 110mm suspension for helicopters or the 250mm suspension. To keep stores from rocking sideways as the aircraft maneuvers, sway braces are provided to steady the stores. Sway braces are bolted to the rack frame. These may be automatically or manually adjusted. A rack can release a stall via gravity or by ejection. Ejection utilizes an impulse cartridge, a pyrotechnic device which provides jettison capability by igniting and supplying an ejection force to safely propel a store away from the rack and aircraft. Some racks contain an auxiliary cartridge in the event that the primary cartridges fail to fire. The rack will also have accessories such as a zero retention force arming unit, a solenoid to pull arming wires from fuses, ports for data, video or electrical fusing. The MILS TD-1760 aircraft store electrical interconnection system defines a standardized electrical interface between a military aircraft and its carriage stores. Ambiguously and for simplicity, the term rack is also being used to refer to some support structures. In popular culture, racks usually refer to bomb racks or racks mounting bombs which covers everything from a support structure to its associated racks. A multiple ejector rack usually refers to a support structure which enables the carriage of six stores. A triple ejector rack refers to a support structure which enables the carriage of three stores. Guided missile launchers Guided missile launchers provide the mechanical and electrical means of suspending and air launching a guided missile from an aircraft. The housing assembly is the main structural member of the launcher. It is an extruded, machined aluminum member that provides structural rigidity to the launcher and includes provisions for mounting all other assemblies. It also includes provisions for mounting the launcher to the aircraft. Some launchers, one, have a nitrogen receiver assembly which stores the high-pressure nitrogen used to cool a missile's IR detector in the guidance system. All receivers contain a charging valve, relief valve, and a pressure indicator mounted in the aft end of the cylinder. Power is applied to the missile guidance control system through the umbilical plug. An actuator-operated safety device prevents inadvertent firing of launcher cartridges. Missiles use hangers to mount to a rack which, in cross-section, resemble either a T-bar called an internal T-shaped hanger or resemble an edgy horseshoe called an external U-shaped shoe. Ambiguously, hangers are also often referred to as lugs or hooks. The majority of launches can also be referred to as rail launches because of the use of external rail flanges, a guide for the missile suspension hangers during firing. Aircraft such as the F-4 Phantom II, the F-18, and the Panavia Tornado ADV have semi-recessed fuselage stations to reduce drag. These stations have internally mounted launchers that use ejection for launching. The rapidly expanding gases, created by impulse cartridges, actuate ejector pistons and release the missile from the launcher. The missile is propelled to a safe distance before it ignites its rocket motor. Stealth aircraft such as the F-22 use extensible launchers that are pneumatic actuated and are either rail, 2, or ejector, 3, types. Stealth aircraft such as the Xiong J-20 use retractable launchers which moves out on rails allowing the weapons bay to be closed while still hanging outside. Rotary launcher, a rotary launcher is a rotating suspension equipment mounted inside the bomb bay of a bomber. Rotary launchers have stations of their own and offer the ability to select certain stores within the bomb bay for release. The disadvantage of a rotary launcher is a slow release of stores. The rotary launcher of the B-1 for example requires 7 seconds until the next store is rotated into release position. Bomb rack, in contrary, a conventional bomb rack of the B-52 would have mounted stores in vertical columns making individual store selection and release impossible without releasing all stores ahead in the column line. The advantage of a conventional bomb rack is a prompt release of all stores in short order. Bombers like the B-52, the B-1 or the B-2 use custom-designed bomb rack support structures with their own designation for example common bomb rack, common bomb module, or smart bomb rack assembly. Store release control, aside from the release options of a rack a pilot can select release mode for releasing one or multiple stores. Stores can be jettisoned selectively in single mode or ripple mode or salvo mode. 
The term ripple applies to the single or ripple and single continuous release mode from one or from mirror stations. Salvo release mode applies to a combination of several stations together for example adjacent stations. For multiple store release an interval timer can be set to release stores in fixed time steps. For an external store emergency release there is for example a panic button in the F4 Phantom 2. Example Station Designation Hard points on aircraft are numbered from left to right. For example, the Boeing FBD family has nine weapons stations, one and nine, at the wingtips, have a single rail launcher for an AIM-9 type store. Two, three, seven, and eight, located under the left and right wings, have mounting points for Su-63A or Su-63 Ares per hour pylons. The pylons in turn support a BAU-32 per hour ejector rack, to which various stores or launches are attached. These stations may have a bomb loaded directly upon them, or have a multiple ejector rack with several stores, or various rail-type launches for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, a LAU-115 rail-type launcher for an AIM-7. 4. A LAU-115 with two LAU-7 or LAU-127 launchers, one bolted to either side, for two AIM-9 or AIM-120s. 5. A LAU-117 for an AGM-65 Maverick. 6. A LAU-118 for an AGM-88 Harm. 7. 4 and 6, which are located on the sides of the fuselage, are LAU-116 ejector-type launchers for AIM-7 and AIM-120 missiles. Station 4 can also support a forward-looking infrared pod for detecting and marking targets. 5 which is on the center line underneath the fuselage, mounts a smaller Su-62 per a pylon and a BAU-32 rack, and many of the same stores as the wing pylons. The exception is anything rocket-powered, to avoid endangering the nose landing gear. 3, 5, and 7, are wet feed fuel to and from external fuel tanks. At least one aircraft, the Sepec Hatch Jaguar, had some versions fitted with overwing hardpoints for air-to-air -air missiles instead of putting them on the wingtips. These overwing hardpoints were the same lateral from the aircraft's centerline as the innermost pair of underwing hardpoints. See also, Bombay, References, Robert Hooke. Introduction to Aeronautics, A Design Perspective. AIAA. Retrieved March 16, 2014 A Chapter 7, ABC Airborne Stores. Suspension Equipment and Aircraft Store Interface MILS TD 8591, December 12, 2005, The Weapons File Air Armament Center, Aero 1A Adapter Assembly Aviation Ordnance Man 2 and 3 A Euro Aviation Theories and Other Practices, Jane's Russian Air Launched Weapons, Impulse and Delay Cartridges Airman A Euro Aviation Theories and Other Practices, Guided Missile Launchers Aviation Ordnance Man A Euro Aviation Theories and Other Practices, Patent US 8353237, The B-1B Bomber. And Options for Enhancements Congressional Budget Office, August, 1988, External Links, Merriam-Webster, Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge Dictionaries Online, Oxford Advanced American Dictionary.